Hi, Kipsters. Today we're going to talk about how to solve two-step equations. Uh, as we learned earlier, equations are uh, statements of mathematical facts in which you are using an equal sign. So that is uh, the definition of an equation. All right, it's a statement of two expressions being written with an equal sign. An expression, however, is a statement of variables, constants, and coefficients um, that do not have an equal sign. So the equation has an equal sign, expressions do not. No equal sign are, is present. All right, so if an equation is a statement of fact, we use an equal sign to say that this number, whatever this number is, is the same number as this number. So let's say, for example, this number is 7. Well, this number has to be 7. Let me give you another example. So you have 2a plus 4 equals 9. So whatever this number is, it has to be equal to 9. So 2a plus 4 is the same number when everything gets, fi gets figured out. It'll get simplified to 9. And that's the statement uh, that this is the reason why I use an equal sign. Okay? All right, so let's move on and let's actually figure out how do we solve two-step equations. So let's go to this example. We have 4x minus 5 equals 3. The first thing that we need to figure out is um, you want to get just the variable by itself. So you want to isolate, solve for just this. You want to solve for x. So this statement reads 4 times some number that I don't know yet minus 5 gives me the same number as 3. All right, so I have to figure out a value for x that will make the equation true. The goal for solving, algeb for solving algebraic equations is to figure out a value for the variable that you're trying to find that will make the equation true. All right, that is the goal. Um, the other thing that we have to think about is we then want to get all the coefficients. Coefficients are numbers that multiply by variables, um, and there's uh, invisible multiplication happening between this 4 and this x. So it's 4 times x. That's what 4x means, 4 times x. Then you have this minus 5, which is a constant, and you also have a 3 over here, which is a constant as well. Constants are just numbers. Negative 5 will always be negative 5. 3 will always be 3. Okay, so you want to get all of the coefficients and the constants on one side of the equation and just the variable that you're trying to solve for on the, on the other side. All right, an interesting thing happens whenever you actually move um, a constant coefficient or variable from one side of the equation to the other, you actually have to take the opposite, the inverse operation when it changes sides. And we'll figure out why that happens right now. All right, so to solve this equation, 4x minus 5 equals 3, I first want to, I, I want to keep 4x, I guess, by itself. I want to get this negative 5 off this side. So in order to get rid of it, I have to add the inverse of negative 5. Well, the inverse of negative 5 is a positive 5. So if I do that to this number, I have to do it to this number as well because this number is the same as this number over here. So I'll add 5 to both sides. I'm going to do it the long way first, and then I'll show you the shorter way. I'm giving you the long way so that you have a mathematical sense of why the short way works. All right. So these will cancel out because of the inverse property of addition. When you add a number to its opposite, you make 0. 4x plus 0 gives me 4x because the identity property of addition. All right. So 4x is left on this side equals 3 plus 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. So I now have 4x uh, equals 8. Well, 4 times what number will give me 8? Well, to get rid of this, um, with respect to x, I'm multiplying 4, multiplying x by 4. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, the inverse of multiplying by 4. The inverse of multiplying by 4 is dividing by 4 or multiplying by the reciprocal of 4, which is 1 fourth. So I'll multiply both sides by 1 fourth. And the 4's will cancel out. They'll make 1. That's the inverse property of multiplication. 
You multiply a number by its reciprocal to make 1. And all of this is 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times x is x. That's what I want. And the invisible coefficient in front of that is 1. And then I am multiplying 8 by 1 fourth. All that simply means is divide 8 by 4. You get 2 and then multiply that by 1. And you get 2 over 1. And you get 2. All right, so x equals 2, but we're not done yet. We have to plug it in and make sure that the answer makes sense. So take 2 and plug it back into the original equation. If you actually get 3, you want the answer of 3, then the x is correct. So 4x means 4 times x. So 4x is 4 times 2, because I'm substituting in for x, minus 5 should give me 3. All right, use order operations. Uh, no groups, no exponents. Multiplication division, yes. Let me do that first and copy everything else. 4 times 2, 8. Multiplication division, no. Addition subtraction, yes. Let me do that next. And I get 3. If this is the same answer as this, then x does equal 2. All right? So that's the long way. Uh, and you do this because uh, you actually are using the equality properties. In other words, if I add a number to this number, to this side, I have to add the same number to this side because you're saying that both these numbers are the same number because you're using the equal sign. If I multiply a number by one-fourth, if I multiply this entire number by one-fourth, I have to multiply this entire number by one-fourth as well because they are the same number. All right, That's what we call the equality property of, um, of multiplication if I'm multiplying uh, or addition if I'm adding. Okay, All right, now the shorter way. Uh, basically, we recall the fact that once a number moves um, sides on the equation, you take the opposite uh, or the inverse of that. Okay, So let's start with this 3. In instead of taking 3, instead of taking 5 away from 3, so we're going to do the inverse operations now. Instead of taking away 5 from 3, I'm going to add 5 to 3. So the new equation would be 4x equals 3 plus 5, which is 8. And now this 5 is gone. The quick way, because if I added a 5 to this, it would cancel out and make 0. All right, so 4x equals 8. Next, uh, instead of multiplying 8 by 4, I'm going to multiply 8 by the reciprocal of 4, which is 1 fourth. So x then equals, the new equation, is x times 1 fourth. Let's divide 8 by 4. I get 2 times 1 equals 2. So x equals 2. Let's plug it back in and see if it works. 4 times 2 is 8, minus 5 is 3. This checks out. All right, so x, the value that makes this equation true for x is 2. x equals 2. All right, let us do another problem. Let us do it the longer way just so you see um, why the shorter way actually works. All right, so uh, I have 6x plus 9 equals 20. I want to get the variable by itself. So therefore, I'm going to uh, use the inverse operation to get rid of this 9 on this side. So instead of adding 9, I'm going to add a negative 9 to this number, and I'm going to add a negative 9 to this number, or I'm going to subtract 9. So I get 6x left on this side. This makes 0 equals 20 minus 9. 11. All right. Then, in, uh, instead of multiplying x by 6, I'm going to uh, divide x by 6 um, a, or multiply by 1 sixth. So let's do that. The reciprocal, that's what division means. When I do that, I'll cancel out and make 1. That's 1 times 1 is 1 times x is x. So that's gone. And then uh, let's see if I can cross-cancel. 
Mm, we can't cross cancel, so let us multiply then. 11 times 1 equals 11 all over 6. The answer that makes this true is x equals 11 sixths. Now, you're used to getting whole numbers all the time, but pri primarily um, in algebra, it's more often the case that you're going to be getting uh, a rational number as opposed to um, simply a whole number, so a number that looks like a fraction. Of course we know, though, that whole numbers can be written as fractions. All right, let's plug this in and see if it actually makes sense. So the equation should read on my check, 6 times whatever x is, we're saying x is 11 sixths, plus 9 should give me the answer 20. Well, let's see. Uh, the 6, I can cross cancel because I'm multiplying, so that'll make 1. 1 times 11 is 11, divided by 1 is 11, plus 9 is 20. So yes, the missing number that makes this true is 11 sixths. All right, let's do this the shorter way. If I, instead of adding 9 to 20, I'm going to take 9 away from 20. So 6x equals 20 minus 9. So that's 11. So there we go. And then instead of multiplying 11 by 6, I'm going to multiply by the inverse or reciprocal of 6, which is 1 6. So x, the new equation to solve this, would be x equals 11 times 1 6. And then 11 times 1 is 11, all over 6. x equals 11 6. Okay? And we showed our check on the other example. We have one more problem to go. Uh, we have 4x minus 7 equals 19. You might want to pause the video and see if you can solve this problem on your own. And then come back and unpause it when you're done to see if you actually have the correct answer and did the proper steps the way you should have and checked your answer as well. Okay? All right. So instead of x is over here, it's not by itself, so I have to get it by itself. So I'm going to use inverse operations to get rid of um, numbers to get x by itself. All right, instead of taking 7 away from 19, I'm going to add 7 to 19. So I have 4x equals 19 plus 7, 26. So I have 4x equals 26. Instead of multiplying 26 by 4, I'm going to multiply 26 by the reciprocal of 4, which is 1 fourth. So the new equation will be x equals 26 times 1 fourth. Now the variable is by itself on one side, and that's what I want. All right, can I cross cancel? Yes, I can. I get a 2 there. Pull out a factor of 2 from uh, 26, and I get 13. So I get 13 times 1 equals 13 all over 2. So the answer I get is x equals 13 over 2. 2. So 13 halves. Let's see if this is actually correct in my check. 4 times, 4x means 4 times, so 4 times x I say is 13 halves minus 7 equals 19. If this is true, then um, the answer is correct for x being 13 halves. All right, can I cross cancel here? I'm multiplying fractions. Yes. So I pull out a factor of 2. All right, so now I have 2 times 13 gives me 26. And now 26 divided by 1 is 26. 26 minus 7, let's see if that gives us 19. 16 minus 7 is 9. 1 minus 0 is 1. Yes, it does. The answer is correct. X equals 13 halves. Hope you enjoyed this presentation on solving two-step equations and that it made your understanding of uh, solving equations a bit easier and more simple. Thank you and uh, take care.